Dancer Show. On today's show, actress Jenny McCarthy, Survivor host Jeff Probst, and Better Than Ezra performs. And now, here's your host, Tony Danza. Thank you so much. Hi. Oh. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, everybody. How's everybody? Okay, I hope? Uh, that's great. Great. I feel great. I feel great. You know what I did last night? I look great? Thank you. How do you like? What about the hair? I'm not sure. I had another guy call me up and say, uh, a guy called me up and made fun of my haircut. And uh, my friends were all calling me up, making fun of my haircut. He said to me, uh, how long did you sleep uh, after it was finished? So, something like, like, you know, I slept through the haircut now. I don't know. Um, last night I was at the St. Gennaro Festival in, uh, in, on Mulberry Street down in Little Italy. It's amazing. Um, First of all, it was just the most beautiful night for a feast. It was just that people were just having a great time. And, and, and it's one of the great New York institutions, the, the St. Gennaro Festival. I was down at Cha-Cha's store, the Cha-Cha's uh, cafe, and uh, uh, I made an appearance on the Wise Guy show on Sirius Radio. I ate a lot of food. I eat a lot of food, <laughs> and, uh, but and we, got, we, we took a film, a film crew down there and we shot some stuff. I'm going to show it later on in the week, so uh, if you were there and, and you, you know you're going to be on TV, it's going to be later on in the week, okay? Um, I want, oh, uh, let me just... <laughs> let, me, um, let me just thank... I want to thank somebody. You know, the, the uh, New York City Mayor's Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting does this. Uh, you know, they really help us out with permits to shoot around the city. And uh, they, I, I even got a T-shirt out of it. But I just want to say thank you to them. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, so did you watch Martha last night? The Apprentice. Martha the Apprentice? Yeah. I think... I think it was very enlightening. It really was, I think. Well, I, you, you, ladies going like this, but I, I mean, it was enlightening in that we found out, we find out that Martha is the nicest woman in the world. <laughs> She's the nicest. Even when she fires them, they she says, you just don't fit in. <laughs> you know? She, and we have something in common. We write notes to each other. I, I mean, to the people. She writes notes to the, to the people she don't fit in. They, they, she, they get a note. And I, I write notes to all my guests. So I was thinking, I write notes to them when they're coming, she writes notes when they're going. <laughs> and you know what else I noticed? I don't know if you noticed, there was so much Martha products around. I mean, it was like product placement heaven, you know? I was thinking they should just do it at Kmart. How's that? <laughs> All right, anyway, oh, by the way, I watched Lost last night. I worked out the TV. Pretty good, but... I'm still lost. I mean, I, I, you know, now they found a guy with a gun and a... I, but I, I, there's no answers. I, you know, I'm waiting for found. That's, that's what I want. Oh, and by the way, I, I know yesterday uh, I went on about uh, well, two days ago, whenever it was... Oh, yeah, it was yesterday. Dancing... <laughs> it's <weird. laughs> Dancing with the stars. I, 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 I sort of was rough on the show. And, I, I, and then I talked to my Aunt Frances, and, and my Aunt Frances is right. It's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful show. I really, and I can't wait for the results tonight, okay? And I'm, and I'm rooting for Kelly. And I'm really, because I'm rooting, I'm rooting for Kelly Monaco because John Hurley dances with his face. Now, <laughs> on a sad note, this is sad. One of my dear friends uh, and, and somebody I, I think we all love, Tony Bennett, his, he lost his brother, uh, his brother John. So, Tony, we're, we send our condolences out to you. I'm so, so sorry. Um, this hurricane that is now threatening the uh, Galveston and the Texas coast is just, I just can't believe it, the size of it. It's, it's off the charts. So, be safe down there, folks. We're really thinking of you, and I, and I hope everybody, once this uh, terrible tragedy uh, happens, will uh, we'll, we'll get on board and, and support the relief effort. Um, let's have a little good news of the day. Did you see this flight, this plane that landed in Burbank? Yeah. Well, here it is. Now, now, I don't know who made that plane. Th thank God everything worked out. But I don't know who, how come that thing didn't snap down? And that's really, that's workmanship, whoever made that plane. I'm very, that's good. Okay. We got a, we got a really great show today, and, and it's packed, so let's get going. Let's play the game. This is a game, of course, where a home viewer can win up to $5,000 on a, a busy, a Disney... <laughs> 
a Disney Visa gift card. It's a little game we like to call... Hiya, folks. Okay, let's play. On the phone today, we have Angela Barr from Detroit, the Motor City, Michigan. Angela watches us on WDIV Channel 4. Hello, Angela. Are you there? Uh, yes, Tony. I'm here. How, How are, are you? you? How, how's it going? How's Detroit today? Things are going very well. Thank you for asking. Do you know, I, I have a uh, dear friend in, uh, in uh, Detroit, Chris Ch Chelios. The, oh, uh, yeah, hockey player. for the Red Wings, you need that, to come on down to see us, Tony. Yes, You'd be glad to have you. I'm going to come down. I am. I'm getting to Detroit. Okay. Um, and by this, the way, Tony, yes, the hair dear. looks good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Angela. You're and I got to say it, hey, Angela. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, now, usually, usually, Angela, we have a, an audience member puck dropper. But today, you know, this was so great about Extravaganza, you could fool around here. We have a very special guest dropper, all right? Oh, really? You never know who's going to be dropping by, and you never know who's going to be dropping the puck. And today, from the classic sitcom, Good Times, Mr. Dynamite himself, Jimmy J.J. Yeah. Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya, Jim. Look at that, Jim. Hi, Jimmy. How are you, Jimmy? Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. What nice you... to be on the Danza show with the Feast of San Gennaro and everything. I love that. <laughs> what are you doing in New York, Jim? I'm in New York. I'm, I'm uh, actually going to Buffalo, New York. Tonight I open at the Wits End Comedy Club. If you're in Buffalo, Rochester, come on by to see All me. Right. All right, Jim. All right, Jim. You know how this works, right? Yes. Pick a puck and drop Pick it in a puck. slot. Whoa, Pick a boy. puck. Come what do you on, get? Me Maybe with pucks. Black people love pucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Z. That's the end. In the Z. Here we go. go in the Z. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Don't worry about it. All right. Way to be, Jim. <laughs> You'll be Angela. Yes. Jimmy, Jimmy Walker just dropped in on thirty-five hundred dollars for you. Oh my God! Okay, okay so let's what go. is let's it? What what subject uh, are you an expert in? TV sitcom classics. Oh. Yeah. Right, well, well then, you know, since Jimmy's here, it has to be a. <laughs> well, since Jimmy's here, we're going to use it. All right, in the show, Good Times. The yes. neighbor, Win Wilona Williams, was yes. Florida's best friend from. A, church, B, high school, C, camp, or D, work? I'm going to say high school. That is correct. Oh, my God. Okay. You know, congratulations, Angela. You just Thank won $3,500 on a Disney Visa gift card. Yes, and thanks thank for saying you. nice things about my hair. <laughs> you look good, Tony. And you know what? I can't wait to see you in Detroit. Okay, Angela. Thanks very much. And Jimmy, thank you so thank much. You. Have a good time with the Buffalo. Don't forget, you can see Jimmy starting tonight through Saturday at the Wits End in Buffalo. And he's on Eliminate's blast from the past week, November 14th through the 18th. So check your local listings. Coming up next, Jenny McCarthy is here. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Unpredictable Jenny McCarthy. Okay, my first guest. Wow, we had such a great audience today. Thanks very much, folks. I appreciate it. Great audience. My first guest is an actress. She's a model. She's a best selling author. And now she's an acclaimed screenwriter. She wrote and stars in the upcoming movie Dirty Love, which has people buzzing. You know, it was, a, it was in Sundance. And uh, anyway, here's a little look. What can I get you to? I'll have the I just got dumped Sunday. <laughs> I don't think that's on the menu, dear. Then make me the best Sunday you could possibly imagine that would take away every painful experience that any man ever did you wrong. Go. Oh. I'm a little I'm a little afraid to see the movie now, but please welcome Jenny McCarthy. Before you start, 
start, before you start, sit down, buddy. Well, welcome back. By thank the way. you, but I just have to thank you because uh -huh. Tony did a great thing for me. Oh, um, last time I was here, oh, 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 oh. I was in desperate need for him to oh, 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 oh. <laughs> take over for me to help host a charity that I was supposed to help uh, help for candies, and my son was sick. No, no, no. Uh, all of that is one, uh, you know, and I would do it for you anytime, Jen. But it was the way that I got hooked into it. You see what Jenny did? She was a guest on the show. And, and when I left, Jenny left you a note. I said, oh, no kidding, Jenny left me a note. Isn't that nice? I usually write the notes. So I read the note and it said, would you do this thing tonight? And uh, the, my son is sick and, I, I, and it wasn't like I could go, I, ca I can't, I, have, I said, I got the note, I had to do it. So, but I had I'm a great I'm so time. grateful, thank you. And please give him a round no, of applause. No, no. No, it, it was great. So much to no, me. it was great, and we had a great time. I'm glad. And it's a, it's a really a good. Why don't you tell what's the cause? Candies. It's you know to to help promote to prevent teenage Teen pregnancy. pregnancy. Yeah. And I'm... it's been doing so well and getting the word out there. And Beyonce, so many people are behind it, and now you step behind. Yeah, it. Yeah. So no, I, this is big. We had uh, we had somebody on the show the uh, the other day who was talking about you know kids going to college and stuff, and and we really do have to watch this. Uh, there's a there's a, a, a I think there's a report out that says 30 percent in America are born out of wedlock. Well, I so, believe I mean, that. And know, if you talk to young kids now, what they know about sex at such an early age, I can't even believe it. Yeah, if you can't believe it, we're really I know. Yeah. Exactly, because you know me. <laughs> Woo. Speaking of this, now, um, I couldn't get the movie. I tried like crazy to get the movie, because I want to see the movie before you're on. Okay. But I didn't see it, so tell me a little bit about the movie. All right, it's about a girl that walks in on her boyfriend sleeping with another woman. Ooh. And she seeks revenge on him, um, but things go horribly wrong. That description isn't even remotely close as to how insane this movie is. Uh -huh. I wrote it about five years ago out of complete desperation in Hollywood. I, that's why I became a writer. No, wait a minute. Wait, what do you mean? Desperation over real romance or over, over uh, scripts. professional? Over okay. scripts. Because everything that was sent my way was very stereotypical. Bikini Car Wars 12. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've had enough of these. And you were great in 11, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> very good, Tony. <laughs> but there aren't any female comedic movies mm -hmm. like uh you know wedding crashes i mean they've got the screwball comedy exactly right. they only cast them for the men so i said it's about time a chick can do just as crazy things and wrote one myself now you wrote a pretty racy movie evidently from what i understand it's pretty edgy it's edgy okay yes you say edgy i say racy anyway <laughs> um and you wrote yourself some pretty racy stuff right so uh racy but not in terms of like you know uh like dirty, naughty, dirty. It's more like edgy, gross. Yeah. <laughs> Just to let you guys know, I mean, the girls, when they see this movie, I love watching the audience because the girls are going, oh my God, and the guys go, <laughs> the guys are pretty repulsed, but I just wanted to make a statement mm -hmm. to show that chicks can do it too. And there's so many scripts out there for the guys, for the lead guys being funny and not, and you know, the girls are always the straight girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, you're so funny, but I wanted to be the funny one. And oh. this really shows some, oh, okay. stuff. Now it's directed by your husband, am I right? My ex-husband. Yeah. I, well, I didn't want to say, I didn't want to add the ex. I just was going to try to slip <laughs> it into I went there. Um, bit of conversation. You know what? The, the movie did not cause the divorce. That was just one. That's my next question. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I wanted to kill yeah. him. <laughs> when we, we we filmed, I we had two creative minds that are working along with husband and wife. And husband and wife, as you know, you say whatever you want to each other. Yeah. So I'm like, the camera doesn't go there, and he's like, yes, it does. <laughs> so we fought the. I mean, I literally want to rip his head off, but. Um, we, we made it past that, at least. It was just this earlier this year, things didn't work out too well. Uh, I, and I'm, we I'm did sorry separate. about that. I'm, I'm ah, sorry about I'm, that. I'm fine. You're fine. He's not, but I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You. you know, I have no censor. Yeah. I'm no, it's sorry. great. Yeah. We love, that's why we love you, too. That's why people love you. I mean, and you, and, and by the way, I can see you doing screwball comedy. We've seen you do that stuff, so I think you're great. Now, are you... I hate to ask you now because I'm, I'm on the personal vein. Sure. Now, are, you, are you dating again now? Are no, you, you know, I, I mean, I'm. I mean, it's fast. It's I mean, a little yeah. too quick. Um, you know, after being married seven years, I kind of want to just look around a little bit I'm a, I'm a, uh -huh. and just have have some fun and really focus on being a mom. I love. Oh, you talked to me. Yeah. Now, and, 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 and your son, right? Yes. yes. Little boy, three years old. Three years Still old. Still the best thing that's ever happened in my life. I, I, I just love him. 
him. I mean, the stuff that he says now and just, you know, he crawls in the bed every night at 1230 and goes, Mama, I love you. Oh, God. It's like, how can it? How can any guy ever take the place of that? Yeah, no, well, he like, is. Well, wait, guys aren't supposed to take the place of that. Right. They're supposed to, you know, and, 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 and add it to something. Or, uh... I, you know, I'm going to be very selective because, as you know, with children. Now, you just said, it's an interesting thing that just happened. But... You said selective. Ah. So there was a luck thing there in there, a, a selective. It's uh... probably going to be a luck thing. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I just want to make sure that my, my son is protected and my home is protected. And anyone that comes in, it has to go through a very intense screening well, by I me. That, I think that's a good idea because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kid is, uh, is the most important thing in, in, in that kind of a situation. Always. Let me ask you another question. I read in the bio, I was reading the bio this morning. I thought you said the Bible. I'm like, good for you, Tony. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> no, I was reading, I was reading uh, the bio and, uh, and I noticed that you uh, uh, were, uh, you wanted to be a nurse. Can you believe it? Well, I, well, I, no, yes, of course. Look I at me. No, no, Can well, you imagine me going, I have to take your temperature now? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I was thinking about something like that. You know, I'm thinking you're in, you know, you're in intensive care or something, and you walk in in a nurse's outfit, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, my God. It's I, not going to happen. I'm still sick. Let me stay here. You can't get me out. No. You know, I went to school to, at Southern Illinois University for two years. Sin City. Yes. Isn't that it? It's crazy. It's nice. It's I, I couldn't even make it. Um, but I did. For some reason, that just medical things just fascinated me. And, and I, I was so broke, I um, had police coming to my door to arrest me for bouncing checks because I needed food. So uh -huh. I was writing bad checks for food. And that kind of put the stop on my nursing career, nursing thank career, God. Yeah. Well, that, you know, that, that, did you go to Catholic school? 12 years, Twelve years of Catholic school. I can recite a mass perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you for that. I, went, I went to Catholic school. Did you, did you go to church every Sunday? I was, we were very, I, I didn't, I, la I lasted only till the sixth grade. That's when they asked me to leave. But, but before that, <laughs> before that, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to picture you. A nurse in Catholic school and dirty love. It's a, it's, you know, it's perfect. Is there, is there a uh, progression? Think that's a natural it. progression, you think? I was so, so, like, controlled in school my whole life that by the time I got out of it, I was like, this is the world, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I used to go to bed at night, and I'm not even exaggerating, saying 60 Our Father, 60 Hail Mary, 60 Angel of God, 60... I used to p pray to my pets, Pickles, Pepper, Cookie, Kelly, Sheba, Wolfie, Penny. <laughs> I mean, that goes to show you. I mean, I used to write the site, the Mass. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so they may become the body of one in Christ. Proof. There's my wow. proof. Well, I, I was the genuflection champion in my no, school. Yes, I could have. Anyway, listen, up next, Jenny and I hit the streets live to quiz New Yorkers about famous Jennies. It's called a game, it's a game, I mean, a game called Jennies from the Block. Get it? So <laughs> stick around. We'll be right back with Jenny and Father. Still to come, Survivor host Jeff Prost. One huge show, two great stars. And one of them is playing Martha Stewart. Guess who? It's an all-new Tony with Sybil Shepard plus Larry King. We're doing our own little version of The King and I. All-new Tony Danza. Okay, so we're out on the street on 67th Street with Jenny McCarthy. Hello. And uh, since Jenny's here, we thought we'd play a little game called Jenny's from the Block. Get it? Okay, so the, we're going to ask qu questions of people walking by, and if they answer the uh, questions right, they get J-Lo's new CD, Rebirth, Ooh. or whatever it's called. Yeah, Rebirth. Rebirth. And if not, they get a script of <laughs> Geely. Okay, so... <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. On. All right, so Jenny, you take first it First one, first one. Hey, how are oh, you? Hi. Come on over here. Oh, hey, hey, hi. hi. Come on in here. Wait, this, this too. Oh, Oh, two, two, yeah, two. Come on. Yeah, you, all right, that's here. No, how about there we go. That that better. Oh, all right, I'm going to ask the first question. You want to answer it? Uh, sure. Okay. Wait. Jennifer Lopez has been has had her famous booty insured for over one billion dollars. Is that true or false? I say it's true. Is it true? The answer is false. I'm oh, so sorry. Okay. Although it's rumored uh, to be insured for three hundred million. I'll give you. Let me give you another chance. Yeah, take that, please. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Beals from Flashdance once babysat Regis Philbin's kids. Is that true or false? I'll say true. True. That's true. That's Yay! right. How about that? All right, 
So here we got it. Give me a couple of these. And you get the Geely strip. I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. Hey, are you really friends for 70 years? Yes. You've been friends? Yes. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. So nice meeting you, folks. Okay. Thank, Thank you very up, much. Baby. Come on over here. Uh, okay. Hi. What's your name? Andrea George. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Okay, I think Jenny's got a question for All you. All right, here it is. If Jennifer Gardner and Ben Affleck have a baby girl, they plan on naming her Electra after her character in Daredevil. Is that true or false? False. Oh, you're right. That's false. <laughs> All right, here you are. Here's your rebirth. Good job. Thank you very much. Thanks nice very to much. Meet you. Anybody? Here. There we Hi. go. Hi. Well, what's your name? Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, I think Jenny's got the next question. Oh no, I do. I do. I have the next question. You don't want this Geely script, do no, you? I do no, not I don't think so. All right, in Dirty Dancing. Jennifer Grey improvised the famous line, nobody puts baby in a corner. Is that true or false? True. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Oh, that would be false. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I hate to say it. Here's your script. <laughs> I don't remember to say anything. And here, you know what? Here. Thank oh, you. that's so okay. sweet. Okay, that's Thank you. Come on in, dear. Hi. Hi and what, what's your name? Kate. Hi, Kate. How are you? So I have an next question. Are you, are you from New York? No, I'm from Delray Beach, Florida. Oh, are you just, are you just vacationing? Yes. Ah, well, what weather? Huh? Isn't beautiful. it beautiful? Absolutely. Oh. All right, I think Jenny's got Are you got feeling your lucky? I'm feeling lucky. All right, ready? I'm when a, I, a that's me, <laughs> was younger, I once worked in a Polish sausage shop. True or false? I just have to say true. On that's that that's right. All right. All right. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much, Thanks, Thanks very much. Why smell like kielbasa? Sir. Yeah, no. Did you you really work in a, a sausage? Seven thing? years. I smoked sausage. Were, were you a slicer? Or I what? sliced meat and I also smoked the sausage. So I had to put it in there and crank it out, and then we'd hang it to dry. And then Polish people from around the world would line up for it. <laughs> it really was amazing. Look at Dinkuya. She never ceases to amaze. I know. Listen, Dirty Love opens uh, in uh, in select cities this this weekend, so look for it. Jenny McCarthy, you're the greatest. Thank Thanks. you. So are you. Yeah, anytime you need me, I'm there. Okay, good. Okay, we'll be right back. Still to come, a self-made millionaire and how she made it happen. All right, my next guest, my next guest starts his 11th season as the host of the mother of all reality shows, Survivor. That's what started it all. And this season might be the wildest one of all. First person voted out of Survivor Guatemala. Jim, that's five, that's enough. You need to bring me a torch. Jim, trap spoken. Please welcome, direct from Guatemala, Survivor Guma Guatemala, Jeff Probst. How you doing? Good, good to see you. How are you? You are. You are. Welcome back to the show. You know what I like? Is you, you wear your shirts way out of you. You don't, you don't button that last button. Last button, down there. yeah. I think that, I, I don't know why. You Some, gotta have a little break. Yeah, a little, well, yeah. I was. Think, I was, anyway, there's nowhere to go with that one, Jeff. Okay. I'm telling you. All right. No, I'm, I'm, in, I'm into the untucked thing now okay. this year, you know? Okay. Meanwhile, I'm dying to put back a jacket back on like that. Yeah, I don't very, usually wear a jacket, so we're just so swapping. So you just came here to, break, you know, to, to rub it in, I guess. Yeah, Is that Paul, one? one of your guys told me. He said, just wear a jacket today. That'll would you? aggravate him. Yes, yeah. okay, yeah. So is this the 11th installment of yeah, this? Yeah, I know. And I don't take responsibility for all reality, by the way. Well, I Your mean, you know what intro. I mean? I'm just saying that reality shows, this was really yeah. the start of it, it really, it wasn't was. it? It kind of was, yeah. It I was mean, the once first... this happened and, and it got the numbers that it did, it's... Yeah. And it's continued. No, no sign of any kind of uh, loss so of interest. Far, no. I mean, our ratings have been really big That's for amazing. 11 seasons. Tell, tell us, just give us some of the countries, some of the places. Uh, just well, a list. Uh, just Australia, quick. Africa, uh, Marquesas, Thailand, Vanuatu, Panama. I love that one, Vanuatu. Vanuatu. And Pat Sajak, get it? No, anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pat nice. Sajak 2, what was it? Pat Sajak 2, that's what it was, yeah. Uh, what, now, all these places you go, you're in Guatemala now, right? right? Okay, and it looks rough. Guatemala is the toughest one we've done. And, and that'll Why, it, it, why? Because it was... The, the location was so hot, and, and it, Guatemala is beautiful, but we went inland where it's like 110 every day, really humid, bugs everywhere where you're just constantly kind of doing this, and then the only water source they have was a, was a lake that was full of crocodiles, and the lake is dirt brown, so you can't see in the water. You're looking in it thinking, eh, you know, what are the odds, but I don't know, I can't see. Oh my goodness, now wait a minute, now, what, what, what kind of accommodations do you have, Virgil? 
Well, we, we, uh, you know, it varies. Sometimes we've had hotels, like yes. third world sort of hotels. What do you have hotels. in Guatemala, may in I ask? Guatemala, we were going to be in tents. Uh -huh. And uh, actually... You, you, you were going to be in tents. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just wondered... We're all your... together. All together. And I'm I figuring was, the host has got this big Winnebago, no, you know. There, <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's not that hierarchy. But I will say, when, when we were shooting our last season in Palau, they said, hey, it looks like it's going to be tense in Guatemala. And all the, we got this little creative nucleus sitting there, and everybody's going, oh, tense. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to say something. Guys, season 11, really? We're going back to nylon, six by eight foot tents? Yeah, pup tents? Get out of here. Yeah, man. and so a guy on our crew came up with a great idea. We bought little six by ten foot trailers. They're, they're not as big as your stage. They're like half of this. So they're tiny, but they're yours. So at the end of the day, you have your own little chair to sit in uh -huh. and, you know, relax. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. Sure. I mean, I might even survive in that, in that way. I oh, can, you'd uh, be fine. Uh, now, wait, now, do you have do loved ones come and visit? Do they have like a, I don't mean conjugal visits, but they have visits? I mean, yeah. it, is that? That is not a bad idea. <laughs> Want to know what you're playing for? A conjugal visit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Good idea. No, but I mean it. Now, do they? Do, 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 I know you. You. You had your uh, Julie, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was there. She came, and and you know Julie was someone I met who was on the show. I'm very. I know you know this show, show. is taking over your whole life. You got your relationship out of it, it's your true. career. I mean, you know, this is great. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But I was respectful of the show, and I went to the guys and said, "Look, I totally get it. If you think it's a little weird to have somebody who was on the show see behind the scenes, it won't hurt my feelings." And they said, "No, she signs a confidentiality agreement. It's, oh, really? it's fine. Made a big difference though, because I'm not yes. a gypsy. You know, I have a life that I leave to go do Survivor. Uh -huh. So having somebody there with you who is your life." Especially in that small trailer, you know. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> What's on tap? What, what's, what do we look for this season? Well, we have a couple of twists. We, we came up with an idea to bring back two people who've played before. Oh. And the concept was give the show to 16 new people. It's your show. Here's a machete. Here's some corn. Here's a couple of pots. Here's one more tool. Somebody who's played before. Now, do you use them and say, hey, Dan's has played. You know some stuff. I'm going to carry you so you teach me. Or do you say, Dan's has played. You're a threat. You're going home. See, you just then. That's another. You add this uh, this yeah. variable. I see. That's I see. the only. That's the only the way. The game is show really fresh. interesting. That's what's keep kept this thing alive. I mean, uh, of course, the, the locations are interesting, but the game itself. Yeah. Playing the for structure the structure of it. The, yeah. And how do you make coalitions and yeah. who gets together? And who I think doesn't. you're right. And you're talking about people you don't know and probably don't even like. You know, and then you add in factors like the crocodile thing always gets me because everybody says, yeah, but nobody's ever been eaten by a crocodile. And so I thought, you know what? They're right. And one day, uh, like on day three, we're standing out of the challenge before the survivors get there. And the lake is just pitch black, muddy water. You can't see. And I go to my buddy Kerhoffer, what are the odds if I just walk in there up to my knees, take a deep breath, turn around and walk back that I'll get eaten. He goes, why, why would you want to do it? And I said, because mentally, that's all it is. What, the chances of me getting eaten by a crocodile are like this. Hey, probes, you are nuts. I walk up to the edge of the water, and I went, you're right. Why would I do this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. I was going to say. Oh, God. But you know what it did show me is that it, you can sit at home and say, oh, big deal, crocodiles. But I now realize it is a big deal when you, you're the one who has to walk in there and tempt the crocodile. I'm telling you, you've been out too long on this crazy show. <laughs> now, by the way, there's an NFL uh, quarterback. Uh, Gary Hoga 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 in Who it, right? lies about his, uh, he doesn't want anybody yeah, to know. Yeah, and this is an interesting thing. He doesn't tell people what he is, so doesn't that mean that you could go in there and say, let's say I'm a missionary. I'm going to tell everybody, hey, I'm a missionary, I'm yep. doing this too. Absolutely. To and nobody has. Every time in casting, I sit there and wait for the guy who says, you want to hear my story? Uh -huh. I'm actually a millionaire, but what I'm going to tell, and no one does it. They right. say, well, I'm going to... Hogaboom comes in and says, I'm a landscape architect. The game goes on. All right, Survivor Guatemala airs Thursday nights on CBS, Jeff. Good luck out yeah, there, pal. Yeah, thank you. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, Larry King takes your calls. It's the Tony Danza Show, where anything can happen. You're not going to show. Aww. And everything will. Oh, hello, I'm doing a show. It's all only on the Tony Danza Show. All right, listen up. We're back. You know, my next guest is a very interesting story. She uh, she was a she says she was a bored rich housewife. She was rich. 
But her husband passed away, and she found herself broke with two kids to raise. So she turned a hobby into a business, and today she's one of the highest selling uh, companies on QVC. Her company, supposedly, and I, I want to see the books, but $43 million a year is the net. Her new book is called Pull Yourself Up by Your Bra Strap. So please welcome Jean Bice. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank yes, you. I have a I have a fabulous audience. Almost 50 every, million. 50, 50 million. Oh. If we're gonna brag on me, let's Well look, break. you know, <laughs> what's seven million here or there? But before I start, I feel like the little blonde perky thing that was just up. Before I start, I gotta tell you. <laughs> we were a poor family. And but we were just beginning our rise. It had a little money. Mm -hmm. And my mama always said, tuck. And I had tucked money away. Oh. And while we were in New York, I said, Tony Danza is going to be at the Rainbow and Stars. Oh. And they were going to close the room. Yeah, it was the last And time. from my wealthy days, I knew what it was like to go to the Rockefeller Center. So I said, let's go. We got there with my daughter-in-law, who's in the stage. And the room is like this. It's long and narrow. Right. You were here. We were... Yeah. Over there on yeah. a foggy night. Right, I see. And both of us started bitching at my son. Uh huh. And he walked out of the room. He left us. No kidding. Came back, and the maitre d' came over and said, Mrs. Bice, I'd like you to walk out with me. I thought, oh my God, I didn't have a, a pot to you know what in or a window to throw it out. I've just paid all this money to see Tony Dance, and they're kicking me out. My son had also talked. Uh -huh. And he gave, we gave every penny we had to see you. And we were right in the banquette, right ahead of you. And oh, you yeah. are adorable. You're sort of Frank Sinatra, but cuter. Uh -huh. Cuter. <laughs> now I can afford to see you. Um, I was going to tell you, I was, I was going to say, I hope it was worth it. It That's was worth every said. penny. And if you ever have the chance to go see him, Spend your last dollar to do it. Unbelievable. Because he's lucky. Gene, you're unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what, what exactly is the Quacker Factory? So you know, I, I had That's a, the name of the company. As is, and, and people say, why is it called the Quacker Factory? I had a business where I had 300 women sewing. We were called J.B. Duckworth because I thought it was really she-she, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to keep food on the table for my kids. And I'm working and working and working. And one day I said to my son, this business is not ducky, it is driving me quackers. I could take this line, make it myself, sell it on a street corner, make a heck of a lot more money than I make an ear. Right. And he said, then do it. And I named it Quacker Factory and went and did flea markets and made a living all over the country, making the clothes, putting them in a car, schlepping from flea market to flea market. I did Roosevelt Field, I did Columbus, New Jersey, sure. all over. Then one day he said to me, Mom, you're going to be a little old lady with purple hair selling clothes on a street corner. We got to find you a day job that doesn't involve schlepping. This is the same son who gave the tip to the major D? Yes. He's a good I kid, only this got kid. One. He's a good kid. You know, I only have well, two. I, I'm just saying, I have I, a son and a daughter. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't God know would not give me more. Okay. <laughs> because I would have drowned it. Yeah, I, I am I, not I, Mother Earth. <laughs> I love them dearly. You know, I'll tell you the truth, when I first saw your name, Jean Bice, I thought you were Bo's mother. No. But anyway, that's another story. You know story. what I want to know? Do you think people come up to Bo Bice and say, do you know Jean Bice? I bet. I hope. Is Jean your mother? I hope. <laughs> I hope they do that. Isn't he cute? Yeah, he's cute too. He's cute. <laughs> but let's not talk about okay. him. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, every Monday we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss what do you want to do when you grow up. And I'm now in my 50s at yeah. that point. I'll and, it metaphorically. Yes. Right. Yes, okay. And I hadn't grown up. You know, when my husband dropped dead at my feet, and he literally got up from the lunch table, kissed me, said, I'll see you tonight, and boom, went down. Is that what happened, really? Yeah. And I was a rich wife. Honey, I wrote checks. I didn't know how the money got there. Well, what I didn't I, well, care. Well, how come there was nothing left? Well, then? because it was all family trust funds. My kids got it. Oh, okay. I had bupkis. Uh-huh. And I had to figure out, how did that money get in that checking account? I see. And when he dropped dead, people said... Well, let, let's say when he passed away. Oh, just, honey, just he, honey he did. He <laughs> dropped dead. It's, it's the... Wind passed. He but, pumped. But it's the morning, you know. I just... So they said, oh, you're strong. You can make it. And then people say, well, did you mourn a long time? And I go, mourn hell. He was in heaven. 
I'm down here trying to make a living. My, I prickled from the bottom of my feet to the tips of my toes. It, I was so scared. How was I going to feed these kids? Mm -hmm. And food, as you know, is very important in our family. Well, I, I, we are know, of German stock, you see. I, I'm, I'm just sitting so. here. I'm just going to have a... Have a little... I'm glad you got to eat last night, because yes. I don't think you get to eat much. You're just skinny binny here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, you know, as a rich wife, you do a lot of stuff. Sure. You shop. You go to teas. You do charity work. And you don't worry about the bills. You know, it, well, you, you know, all of a sudden you get to a point, well, there's nothing left to do to be exciting. You got a couple choices. You have an affair. Mm -hmm. Or you go into business. Rich wives go into business all the time. That's true. Luckily, there is a God in heaven, and I was in business as a lark. Didn't know if, I, if people see making a profit. This was a hobby. It was a hobby. It was a hobby. It was a thing. You got to go off to market. You got to buy wholesale. And what, what kind of clo what kind of clothing? Little was so preppy clothes, you know. And, and luckily, we had started making clothes and designing clothes in our own line. I had a, a woman who was a partner, and within a year, she decided to divorce her wealthy husband. And my wealthy husband dropped dead. Yeah, he's, he's gone, yeah. See, <laughs> if you've ever had anybody drop at your feet. No, no, I, I'm not, I haven't had I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Anymore. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, so now you go on QVC is what changes everything, right? That's what right? changes everything. Up to that point, I am walking. You know, I listened to all the tapes. I went to all the classes. I did all the stuff to, you know, get it. I really loved failure, apparently. You know, for some reason or other, I was raised in the 50s where you fell in love, you got married, and you were a wonderful wife. Right. I didn't know how to make a living. Mm -hmm. but I, So I did all the classes, I did all the stuff, and I used to walk out of my house sometimes with money I had gotten out of the bottom of drawers. Mm. And you know how you always got a little change in your purse? Yeah. And I'd say, thank you, God. I, I look in the couch here every I know. day. I'm figuring every day, you look. Yeah. See, you remember yeah. your beginnings. I do. And you'd never forget your beginnings. Never, I promise. Good. I, I, and I know your story. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has one, but... And I'd walk out of my house, and I'd say, thank you, God, I have more money than I'll so, ever be so, able to spend. So the moral of this is, though, the moral of this is, is that here you, you find yourself uh, in, in a bad spot, and you, and with the help of your children, which is another great part of this, you, you turn this, this hobby into a business, and now you're 50 million a year. Don't you just get a giggle yeah, out of I that. <laughs> I get a big giggle. I think it's great. I think it's great. And it... Feel any different than I was scrubbing for No, I, I know you don't. And I also think it says something to people. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an inspirational story. And we, and we appreciate you, you coming know, to tell us. If you us have about a dream, it. you can do anything. People don't all have a dream. Yeah. Some just want to win the lottery. Hell, that's not a dream. That's not a dream. You're supposed to, that's a wish. Yeah. You got to have a dream here. Here. I don't, wherever you keep it. Where's uh, yours? I got a couple of dreams. Please. <laughs> I gotta, and I got them in a couple of places. You gotta too. Work. Okay. All right. Everyone in the audience is getting Jean's book. Pick yourself up by the bra strap. She was nice enough, nice enough to bring them. Thank you for being on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you. Tell us, thanks for telling our story. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, actress Sybil Shepherd on life as the other Martha Stewart. Okay, we're back. Our next guests have released their fifth album. It's called Before the Robots. And you may recognize the song they're about to play for us because it's from the Desperate Housewives commercial teasing this Sunday season premiere, performing the, the, uh, their new big hit, Juicy. Please welcome Better Than Ezra. <laughs>
Guys, great job. It's great. It's a great song. Uh, now, I know you guys are from uh, New Orleans, am from I right? New Orleans, right now. family's no. okay, I hope? Family and friends are okay. That was the most important thing. Our homes escape any flooding or significant uh, damage. But as you know, we're, we're the fortunate ones, so yeah. we're doing all we can for the relief benefit. And how about this other one? Do you see this other Rita, hurry? it's just nonstop. Unbelievable. We're at R. Okay. But anyway, for more information on the band and to find out how you can help the victims of Katrina, go to, be what is it, Better, better Than? It's Not, misspelled. It yeah, it's is misspelled. Better than better Ezra. Than Ezra. Com. Ezra. Com. Please, and uh, we'll be right back. Thanks, guys. You were great. Thanks. <laughs> One girl, you're everything. Two. I want to thank all my guests: Jenny McCarthy, Jeff Probst, Jeannie Bice, who was great. Better than Ezra. This is Nadia DiGelinardo. Studio One, and you've been wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. I hope you come back tomorrow. One smile that cheers you. One face that lights when it nears you. Uh, you know what? We're going to save this song. We're going <laughs> to save this song for when we got more time. We'll see you, folks. Bye-bye.